Hey, First Church family, hope everybody's doing great tonight, and we're excited to study the Word of God with you this evening. Now, I want to talk to you about something um, that I deal with on the regular. It is thinking, overthinking things, or thinking bad thoughts, and just uh, not having the clarity of mind that I need to have, and I need to be a better thinker. So tonight, I want to talk to you about being a better thinker. The Bible tells us uh, well, the Bible tells us a lot of things we get into tonight, but the first thing that we need to do in order to be a better thinker. Now, if you're like me, you have the tendency um, to just think in chaos. That's what I think. My mind just runs chaotically a lot of times, and I think uh, things that will never happen, and I think that they're going to happen. and Or I just... I'm, I'm sporadic in my thoughts and I'm all over the place in my thoughts. So in order to be a better thinker, one of the things that we need to do, the, the first thing we need to do is we need to be purposeful. We need to be purposeful. You may want to put be intentional. We need to be intentional with the way that we think. Don't allow your mind to constantly slip into neutral uh, <laughs> when you're born, or, or constantly slip into chaos. Be intentional. Think about... Uh, things that are holy. Think about things that are great. The Bible t tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best of the time, because the days are evil, but therefore do not be foolish. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Um, Jeremiah 1, 5 says, before I formed you in, in, in your mother's womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I, cons I consecrated you, I appointed you as prophet of nations. Um, the in Isaiah chapter 61, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Um, that there's many, many different things that God has done in our lives that we need to be intentional with when it comes to our thinking and the things that we do, uh, more, more importantly, the things that we think. Instead of giving yourself uh, times where you don't have reasons to think, a lot of people say, well, I just want to go slip into a place where I don't have to think about anything. Well, that never happens. I mean, you may slip into a place that you're relaxed. You may go to a place that you have time to just chill and, and be by yourself or just get along with your thoughts, um, but your thoughts never stop. So be a better thinker. In order to be a better thinker, you've got to be purposeful. You've got to be intentional. You've got to say, God, I want to think on the things that are pure. I want to think on the things that are, are holy. I want to think on things that are good. I want to think about things that are about you and how I can be a better person, how I can be a better husband or a wife or a dad or a friend or a business leader or a, past, a pastor or whatever it is. You've got to be intentional. Be purposeful in the way that you think. Because if you're not, you, you will slip off into destructive thoughts. You will slip off into a destructive pattern of thinking if, you, if you're not intentional on the way that you think. You may go to the place in a dark place when you're not intentional and you, you'll think, well, this is never going to end. I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to, the struggle's never going to be over with. That's just the way things happen in my life. And you'll slip into a a deep, dark place in your thinking. If you're not intentional on thinking on things that are godly, thinking on things that are holy, thinking on things that are pure. So we've got to be purposeful, be intentional in how we think. Secondly, we need to have an end goal, an end goal. And I know you think, what, what, what exactly do you want to achieve? That's it. Think when you're thinking about something, when you when you're going to a project or you're going to when you start to think on something, ask God, what is the end goal of this? Why am I thinking on this? If I'm thinking about this so much, how can what is the end goal? What am I going to do uh, when this is over with? What is going to happen? What do I want to see come out of this? Um, when you're thinking on a project, you're being a, a, a doing work at, at your job thinking on those things. You've got to be intentional about what you're thinking about, right? Be purposeful. If you're doing a project, if you're studying the Word of God, don't do it flippantly. Be, be intentional with it and, and have an end goal. What am I going, what I want to get out of this? What do I want to get out of my study? What do I want to get out of, of what I'm thinking? What is the end goal? Now, a lot of us are flippant. We don't think about end games. We don't think about the end goal. We don't think about it. We just go through life and we go, whatever will be, will be, right? You old timers remember, que sera, sera, que sera, sera. I don't know what it is, but that's where we go. We have no end game in sight. Do, do you want to have a better understanding of scripture? 
When you study the Word of God, well, then that's your end game. I want to know more about the Word of God. Do you have a problem that needs to be solved? What do you have? Uh, what 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 do you want to come out of that? Ask God what His intentions are, what His purpose is, what do you He wants you to learn out of this? Have an end game. You 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 want to? Um, are you planning a future event? Some of you are planning your lives right now. Some of you are younger and you've got your whole life ahead of you. Some of you are older and you've got uh, a few days left. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or you got a few years left. Uh, you you got to ask what the end game is, what the end goal is. What do I at the end of my life? What is the purpose? At the end of my days, what is the purpose? What what do I want people to see? What do I want to get out of this life? You say, well, I need more money. I need to get. Well, that's great, but you've got to find out how to think better, how to put your thoughts and and line them up with the Word of God. And if the end game for you is to have more money, well, you've got a whole nother problem. I mean, you should want money. You should want to be able to leave your, your kids an inheritance and your grandchildren an inheritance. You should desire for that. But if you don't want to leave them something spiritual and, and leave them influence, you've got your priorities mixed up, sir. You've got your priorities mixed up, ma'am. We should want to leave uh, the end goal. The end game should be we want to leave a godly inheritance so they would know how, the path to heaven. So change the way you think. In order to change the way you think, you've got to be purposeful, and then you've got to have an end goal in mind. The third thing you've got to do without question is you've got to block out negative thoughts. We think negative all the time. It's easy to rehash arguments in your mind. I don't know if you're like me, but I'll, I'll find myself thinking about an argument that I had or a frustration that I have or something I want to tell somebody. And, and I'll end up being by myself and talking out loud about that dispute or that struggle or that argument or what I want to really tell them. And that's just something that is negative. You got to get negatives out of your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, it says, chapter 12, verse 21, do not be, do not overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Bible says in Philippians chapter four, verse 18 or verse eight, you know it. It says, finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's commendable, whatever is any, any excellence. If there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, you know about the whole armor. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Evil one. Psalm 19, verse 14, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we've got to block out negative thoughts. Stop being so negative all the daggum time. Get those things out of your mind. God get me straight. Get negatives out of my mind. We've all done it, but, but it's a total waste of thinking time when you think on the negative all the time. Think on the positive. I mean, it, it, I know that things come up. I, I can have a week where one, a whole week, not, not many of them, but a whole week where everything's going great. And then somebody bring up something that's negative, And then my mind goes to that negative thought. And I think I'm consumed with it. And so we've got to get to the point where we rebuke those thoughts. Be outspoken about it. I rebuke that thought. I don't want to think about that anymore. It's out of my mind. It's out of my life. I'm done with it. Get rid of negative thoughts. The fourth thing that we need to do, and boy, is this one that we, we all need to do, is get rid of distractions. Get rid of distractions. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says no temptation in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, says no temptation has overcome you or overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Get rid of distractions. I know that we think that we're all special and that we can multitask and I can think better and I can think about this and think about this and do this and do that and 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 I'm going to be better off for it. But I'm telling you, you're not. You've got to find a way to get rid of things that are distracting you from being a better person, from being a better child of God. And it can be anything that distracts you. Be, don't be distracted. I'm telling you right now, if, if you get alone 
with God or you need to get along with God, you need to turn off your phone. You need to remove yourself from ever-present temptation of technology. That is a huge temptation. I mean, I've got three computers in front of me right now. One, I've got four. One to film, one that's got my notes, the other ones that's got my scriptures. I mean, we, the other ones to make sure my kids are okay when I'm by myself. We've got technology all over the place. There's technology everywhere. We've got to get rid of distractions in order to think clearly, to get our minds set on the path of holiness, to get our minds set on the path of the task that we need to accomplish. We've got to get rid of distractions. Get them gone. Find a way to get rid of the noise of life. Get it out of your, your mind. Listen, some of your distractions, and let me say this and be very clear, be very pointed with you. Some of your distractions is other people. Some of your distractions are other people. You need to get rid of distraction, distracted people, people that are destructive and people that distract you when you're trying to live a life that glorifies God. You've got to get rid of those people in your life. You said, Jeff, some of these are my family. So what? Move them to the background. See them five minutes a week or three minutes a week or 60 seconds a week. Send them a text and then forget about it. If they're distracting you from being the person of God that you know God's called you to be, I don't care if they're family or not. If they're distracting you in the way that you think, in the way that you live your life, you got to find a way to, to put them out. And just say, I, my my psyche, my my psyche, my my thought life, my 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 heart, my life has got to be better, and I cannot be distracted with negativism. Negativism, I've got to, it's got to be gone. So you've got to let them know, and they may not understand, and if they don't understand, that's okay, and ask God to fix the situation. But you can't fix people sometimes. You know the old comedian says, you can't fix stupid. Well, sometimes people are stupid distractions in your life and you've got to get rid of them. I've got rid of stupid distractions in my life and I have been a stupid distraction in other people's lives and they've got rid of me. And that is wonderful. Praise God that we can be better people of God if we get rid of certain distractions in our life. It's okay to let some people go, right? I wish I could tap on the screen. It's okay to let some people go. Let them go. They're a distraction to you and into your life. The final thing we need to do is fill your mind with good things. Fill your mind with good stuff. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 15, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. So fill your mind with good things. What goes into your mind determines on what kind of thoughts that you think, what kind of thoughts come back out, what goes in your brain, what goes in your, in your head. It, I'm telling you, it makes total sense. What goes in your mind, what goes, the things that you think, the things that you allow to go in and fill your mind with are the type of things that come out. Now, whew, that's a lot. That's a mouthful. I need you to hear me real quick and I'm, and I'm done tonight. Your mind is important. Some people say, well, God saves the heart. That's, a, that's an organ. God saves, that's, yes, it's the seed of the emotion, but God comes into our life and we've got to take the spirit of God and allow it to transform our mind. The Bible teaches us in Romans that we need to tr be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So allow good thoughts, allow good things to go into your brain. Fill your mind with good stuff. I know men especially don't like to read but you are going to have to find a way to read the word of God and pour God's word into your mind. These are five simple things that you can do to literally be a better thinker. Think better. Think on God. Think on good things. Don't let your mind get distracted and let your mind... Listen, as, as a man thinks, so as he, is he. The way you think will be the way that you live. The way that you think will be the pattern and pathway of your life. So change the way you think. These things will help you. These verses will help you. These principles will help you. But you've got to apply them to your life. I pray that you become a better thinker. Change the way that you think. Think differently about yourself because you are a child of God. You are purposed. You are holy. You are anointed. You are powerful. God has chosen you and he loves you specifically. He loves you. Change the way you think. 
Change the way you think about yourself and ask God to, to show you how he thinks about you. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you. Thank you for your word today. I pray that we will change the way that we think. God, that we'll be better thinkers, that we'll be intentional about changing the way that we think and what we put into our minds, that we will guard our minds with your word. I love you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Can't wait to see you soon. I pray God's richest blessings over you the rest of this week. We love you and we'll see you real soon.